the voice of the people, Tarek, spoke up this week and t he tweeted, Since this is Champions, we really need more matches inside the arena. And by the arena, he means the final arena for champs, the Inspire Arena. Logistics, etc. exist, he says, but the hype is being sold short with so many studio games. And I think that this is conveying a pretty public sentiment right now that this version of Champions just hasn't felt quite as hype as some of the previous ones. And people are trying to figure out why that is. And we even had actually in the recent media day at Champions, uh, we had Joseph from One Esports asked that question basically of like, is it feasible to be able to run more events at the Inspire Arena or just the large arena in general for these events to Leo Faria? So let's hear Leo's response. Thank you for the question. Look, I think it's important to recognize that um, we missed on a few small things at the studio. So we didn't, you couldn't see a lot of the energy coming through the broadcast. And it's something we've talked about and we hope to fix. Like we had 10,000 people at the Fan Fest outside and we didn't show that on broadcast. Like those things, um, some fans showed up for DRX game, but not the Sentinels and Fnatic game. So you had some empty seats. So like, All right. So I just want to pause it there and, and dig into that first point. So the first thing he says is that they did miss on a few areas and i agree with that i mean as somebody who worked on the broadcast as well and who is working on the broadcast i, I do agree with leo's assessment and listen i'm not in charge of how you run the show i give as much feedback as humanly possible to the people who are above me in the chain though i don't talk to the people at the very tippity top very often um but it's also something that i raised is that First of all, there's not that much energy in such a small area, and so you really have to sell it if that's what you're looking for. And secondly, I don't think we were doing a very good job of showcasing the huge atmosphere that was actually happening, as he said, at the fan fest outside. Leo's saying that there were 10,000 people out there, which is bonkers. I mean, I never saw that many, but I'll, I'll take him at his word that there were a, a huge amount of people out there. Um, and as far as I remember, it was just never really shown on the broadcast at all. So I like that he started there because I do think that this is one of the main reasons that people are saying we need more matches in the arena. If you think back to VCT uh, Masters Shanghai, the group stage arena that VCT China runs out of is so big with its huge, like, massive screens on either side and stuff like that. I don't actually care that much that we weren't in the bigger arena more because the smaller arena still felt like it had the grandiose and the gravitas and the pomp for the moment. So I think it's not necessarily what Tarek's saying about more being in the bigger arena, but just improving the quality of the smaller arena. And this one missed the mark, in my opinion. I'm glad that Leo uh, brought that up because I agree. And now I want to talk about his second point that he raised, which is that some... Uh, fans buy tickets for one game but then didn't show up to the other the example that he gave was some t some fans bought the drx uh tickets but didn't show up to watch sentinels play against fanatic now why wouldn't you come to watch sentinels fanatic i don't know it was an absolute uh barn burner but uh, that's what happens when you sell tickets on a day-by-day -day basis now i'm not advocating for them to move to a match-by-match -match basis i don't know what kind of headaches that would cause um but it's certainly something that I'm sure they've considered because what you do get, and this happens in America's as well. This is not just related to people in Korea. This is not just related to the times that the uh, subways are running and the buses and stuff is that people are just more interested in one game compared to another. And so they buy a ticket for the day that locks up a seat for the entire day. And maybe they turn up a little late or miss the first match entirely or go home after the first match and don't watch the second. We get that a lot in America's uh, and that's kind of natural when you're talking about regional levels because uh, there are certain matches that are just kind of bad quality at the regional level. But when it comes to champs, you would expect that fan culture would want to watch all of the games. And I think that's where we're missing, is that we're not engaging with the fans enough so that they find all of these incredible matches worth spending their time here viewing. And it's not, as I said, just an issue that happens uh, in Korea. Um, though things like the late start time, in my opinion, not a great idea, but they do that in order to maximize uh, viewership uh, online. So uh, I, I then want to follow up because he's got more to say some of those things combined made the energy not come through the broadcast and we recognize that but as far as being on the bigger arena it's important to put it in perspective when we come to a city like champion soul 
We're here for 25 days. 18 of those days are show days. Most entertainment acts around the world, when you think of a music tour, they go to a city for one night, sometimes two, and they move on to the next city. You have to be Taylor Swift to sell out four or five nights in a row. So the idea of going to a big arena for those many nights, especially an arena as big as Inspire, it's just not realistic, right? We always... So let me pause here again, which is that the argument he's making is that it's not necessarily a cost problem, like Riot would be willing to buy out the arena if, more, if it was going to fill out the entire time. What he's arguing is that it's a demand problem, that you actually... It's not that Valorant's tiny, it's just that it's not an absolute world-class entertainment product like a Taylor Swift era's tour or whatever that can pull four or five nights at a huge arena like the Inspire Arena is. And I think that's very interesting when we compare it to Counter-Strike, which I'm going to later on. But uh, he is right, of course, that demand is lower. But then he follows up by saying that the appetite is there. So that's confusing. See tickets, especially for Grand Final, selling out in seconds, right? And we know that the appetite is there. But being more days in the arena, as exciting as it sounds for all of us, it's just not really, like it's too much, too many days. Um, and we think the how we're distributing the show right now makes sense. But again, we all saw that it was lacking a bit of energy. And I think that's what fans missed. Okay, and so what he's saying is that the appetite is there, tickets for grand finals sell out immediately, but demand is also not there for us to open it up larger. So those two things don't really go together in my head. I think he's right. Grand finals tickets do seem to sell out extraordinarily quickly. Um, but at the same time, I don't think the appetite is there even really at all of our venues for everything. Now, I could be talking out my ass here because I'm only going based off public information. I'm not talking about Riot info that Leo would have access to. But, for example, if you look online right now at trying to buy tickets for any day that isn't the Grand Finals, so Friday and Saturday, there are still tickets available. It doesn't appear to be sold out. It appears like you would still be able to buy tickets. It's something like a 1,000 uh, available for Friday and... Uh, 1,500 available for Saturday, something like that when you add them up on the public website that's available. Now, could those be wrong? Yeah, they could, but just based off the best info that I can access publicly, uh, it seems like those first couple of days, I mean, it's going to be a stretch to get them sold out, bearing in mind that they're happening a couple of days from now. So it doesn't look to me like the demand is there to extend it longer, like people might not turn up as much if we were there for four or five days. Um, but I think also another issue is that Valorant has not built an extremely good culture for fans to attend in person. Because it has so few events, people don't get um, used to this idea of turning up. We're a very online community because we were birthed in the pandemic. That was when Valorant released. Uh, the social component of attending is not quite there. There's not as much like standing, engaging with the broadcast and stuff, as you would uh, contrast it to a Counter-Strike product, for example. And I think another really large problem is that we always broadcast in the local language to the house. So anybody that's paid tickets to be there for Seoul will hear it in Korean. For Istanbul, heard it in Turkish. For Shanghai, heard it in Chinese. And that makes sense in some regions, but in my opinion, doesn't in others. And what we're lacking massively is some technological um, uh, infrastructure to be able to have people take like little audio headsets. You know, like little headsets you get when you enter a... Um, a, a, an audio tour of a museum or a silent disco or something get a pair of headphones let them tune in to whatever their language of choice is assuming that riot is broadcasting one be that english be that uh, spanish portuguese french whatever it is and allow more people internationally to travel to these events and not have to experience the broadcast in a language that they're completely unfamiliar with so let's move on, though, from what Leo said and, and discuss this more wholesale. So what Tarek was advocating for was having... So currently, these are the events that happen. These are the matches that happen in the arena. Now, what Tarek was advocating for was opening this up more. Now, he tweeted that on August 18th. So presumably, he would want 
at minimum this included but you know that, that doesn't mean that's all he wants included and i think a lot of people were wanting the whole of playoffs included as well uh, the more you add of playoffs because it's double elimination the more days you're adding as well if you wanted the full top eight included in the arena that would equate to eight days which contrasted to the current three is an enormous addition by the way eight days in arena would put us ahead of almost double in fact double every other like major esport that that would be bonkers that is simply not feasible now I don't know exactly how it works in League of Legends. I am contrasting to Counter-Strike. But I believe in League of Legends, they use like a three-tiered approach where they'll go up a little bit, but not to a full arena for like the for these kind of games. But again, not 100% familiar with it. So if we contrast things to Counter-Strike though, Counter-Strike has a slightly different system. I'm looking at the Copenhagen Major here as a comparison, but generally speaking, these are pretty similar and comparable across Majors, IEM, uh, Cologne that just happened as well. So... This, they have an opening stage that's being played in uh, a studio environment. And then these matches are being played. The playoff stage is what they call it. And yes, it does have eight teams. But because it's single elimination, it only runs over the course of four days. And so that if, you, if we were to include eight teams, we would have to use eight days. If they're to include eight teams, they only need four days. Frankly, I wouldn't be willing to give up double elimination for that benefit. Maybe you feel differently, but for me, double elim is superior. Especially when you don't get as many tournaments. For Counter-Strike, I think it can work because you run tournaments more often, though the majors admittedly not, but more tournaments in general. Okay, so I just want to show you because people who are unfamiliar with CS or casual CS fans might not even tune into some of these like group stage games. So what does it look like when you're in the group stage, uh, like oh, before you get to the playoffs? Oh, this is, is the end of Dust one of the games converted. at the very end oh, of the group. Mouse is playing against Vitality. Work, there isn't a crowd. Finishing There's normally the just on studio on environment, people side. getting Vitality close to the players, it's the people working the broadcast, it's the players, it's the coaches. It's a very intimate feel. Now, I like it. I think it's a feel for a group stage of a tournament it's not what you're thinking of though when you're thinking so of the end the of these big tournaments like the recently run iem cologne it's more equivalent what you just watched to the group stage match like here let's say um although you could maybe argue it's similar to first round of playoffs but i think this is much more what it's actually similar to getting out of groups winning a game like that and for these matches think back to what leo said yes this version of champions actually they have missed the mark a bit with the energy but in previous iterations i feel like if you think back to previous champs in la and uh, if you think back to madrid for example as well there are a huge amount of benefits to the way that valorant currently does it you get a crowd there you get to hear reactions and and shouts even though it's a smaller crowd um, if the crowd is mic'd properly, it can actually add a lot of energy to the broadcast rather than just running everything in studio before you go into an arena setup. Uh, and so, like I said, it, you could make the comparison to these kind of games, but I think that, frankly, that would be a little unfair to CS because it is their group stage. It's just that we have a different system with our double, uh, double elimination kind of setup. Um we only have three arena days. So Counter-Strike has, so CS, let's write this down, has four arena days. Um, and over the course of those four arena days, they're running single elimination. So first day has two games, then another two games, and then uh, another two games for the semifinals, and then the final, right? So they have, uh, dude, why am I doing maths? Seven matches, is that correct? Quarter, 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 semi, semi, final, seven. Okay, good maths. So CS has four uh, days with seven matches. Um, we currently have, so Valorant has, uh, we have three days with four matches. So you can see because we run the lower final as a BO5 and have that stretched out over an entire day as well, we actually run a lot fewer matches 
over the course of a tournament in the arena. We run, you know, a similar amount of days, three versus four, although admittedly it is lower, but the amount of matches is significantly lower. And especially when you think about how many arena moments happen in the calendar in Counter-Strike. For Valorant, if you're thinking about how many times in the year we run these kind of games, it's somewhere between six to ten. And that depends on what you think about Madrid. Because Madrid, we actually didn't go into a new arena. We stayed in the same arena. We just opened up capacity. So if you consider Madrid to be that arena feel, then you could argue that we had 10 arena days um, with 14 matches. Now, if you think that this, as I really do, to be honest, was just an extension of a, a similar thing that got bigger, it didn't really have that like true full stadium feel, then that's only eight days out of the year, uh, sorry, sorry, that's only six days out of the year without these days being played in an arena for Valorant, um, and that's only eight matches, so that's really, really, really small compared to what Counter-Strike is offering over the course of its calendar, because they have so many, they have a tournament circuit style, right, so they, they have these big arenas popping up all over the place. And that helps build a culture as well that is much more comfortable with being there at a crowd. It's very few people's first time, whereas for us, it often is because we're traveling around so often and we have so few events. And their game's just been out longer too, right? Um, another thing to point out is that when Leo was talking, he was talking about the size of the arena. So this is the size of the Inspire Arena that we're in for Champion Soul. It's got a capacity of 15,000. I think it's probably going to be more like 10,000. Normally, when you look at capacity, that's if, like, your show took up no space and you packed as many chairs or bodies in as you possibly could. In reality, what happens is you end up not getting to full capacity because your show takes up space, your stage takes up space, whatever you're doing, be it a sports event or whatever, you're going to take up some room. And so I think, I don't know the numbers for, for 100%, again, just going based off public information, but I think it's probably going to be more like 10,000, maybe 12,000, something like that. Uh, they did say, say that it was going to be the largest uh, crowd for VCT ever, so probably over 10k. Just a little, though. Uh, if you look at the Copenhagen Major, that was held in the Royal Arena, which was, if anything, a tad larger than where we are. Um, now, the thing that they do, though, as well is, for, for us in Valorant, we tend to run, if you look at things kind of like a bowl like this, we tend to run the stage in the middle with a bit more of a 360-degree crowd. And what Counter-Strike tends to do is that they tend to have the stage set up like this, and then some seating in the middle that's like on the floor, and they have a, I don't know really what you would call this, it's over 180 degrees, it's certainly not half the stadium, but it's uh, maybe two-thirds of the stadium, something like that, because the rest is like behind the scenes, blocked off, and held for the stage. You see what I mean there? This is like, I, I mean, why am I trying to draw? Absolutely terrible. So, um, I believe I'm right in saying that CS is go not going to be using up uh, all of this space. They're probably going to be using up maybe two-thirds of it or something, whereas we're going to be maxing it out slightly more because of our 360-degree stage design usually. But broadly speaking, things are going to be pretty similar. So it's not that we're playing in larger arenas necessarily than Counter-Strike. The demand, I think, is just higher, and the culture is more used to this kind of thing. Uh, another interesting point as well is that Leo was talking about Masters Shanghai, and Masters Shanghai sold out very, very quickly. Uh, this was a tournament that had, uh, it was played in the Mercedes-Benz Arena, so that has a capacity of 18,000. I believe it was only actually fitted for like 10,000 when um, Valorant was in town, because Leo was saying that they sold out 30,000 tickets, which three times 10,000, um, in 33 seconds for Masters Shanghai. So, like, all of the tickets sold out in 33 seconds for Masters Shanghai. So, the demand is massively different depending, depending on where you go in the world. Um, and, again, here at Seoul, Korea doesn't have the largest 
uh, Valorant community, although it is the number one shooter in PC bangs at the moment, number two overall, and, uh, you know, the grand finals have sold out, so it's looking fairly promising for a region that didn't engage with Valorant anywhere near as much as China has, uh, but, you know, it's, it's, it's not China. <laughs> so, what do I think an actually good solution would be? Now, what I'd like to see Valorant do is improve its venues for the group stage and for... Sorry, let me get this on screen where you can actually see it. Improve the venues for the group stage and for the opening games down here. And what I'd like to see them do is run not just the arena for the top four teams, but I'd like to see them extend the arena to the top six teams. And that actually only adds on one extra day. It gives us four days in an arena, which is similar to what Counter-Strike sells out. And I'd like to see if the Valorant leadership can try to drive demand. Because I think that that's the biggest issue at the moment from what Leo's saying, is the demand there. And I think that that's a really important thing for them to try to do is drive demand outside of China to attend international events and i think an important way to do that is to create a culture of attending and you're not going to get that by limiting things and making them seem valuable because it, sure it's super valuable that you can only attend valorant events for one weekend out of the year or whatever but if people have never been before are they going to fly into an area that they have no idea about uh, to meet people that they've never met before because local communities haven't formed of people that regularly go to these events and are they going to do all of that to watch a broadcast that they can't enjoy in a language that they understand? I think that the answer to most of that is going to be that those are limiting factors. Those are hurdles. And I'd love to see Valorant try to tackle some of those problems to try to build a crowd culture, a, a, an in-person attending culture that looks less like everybody you know, golf clapping or in this situation in the famous meme that has 1.6 million views whacking the thunder sticks together. And has more to do with creativity and representation of the fan experience. We've never had a trumpet. Standing. And the final thing that I want to end on here, because I believe this was happening at the Paris Major, is that we've announced that Champions is happening in Paris. You know that the crowd atmosphere in France and the ability to activate those fans is extremely large. I would like to see them lean into that, allow more signs, trumpets, drums, flags... Uh, engage with the crowd, engage with the fans more, and try to build that culture for the next year. Try to really create a bit more of an in-person feel for these Valorant events.